in this session let us see some old gate questions of synchronous under loaded condition basically like you know many of the students and like you know some of the faculties also i don't know why like you know they are very weak okay so even iit professors also know that like you know for example in harmonic section now most of us are weak in harmonic section that's why in harmonic section they will give compulsory two marks question if they want to give okay so here also in our uh, what do you say uh, alternator or synchronous machine under loaded condition like you know small question but they will give for two marks or four marks okay so let us see how to solve a synchronous motor a synchronous motor operates at 0.8 pf lag if the field current of the motor is continuously increased, they have given 1, 2, 3, 4. In that, A, B, C, D uh, combinations they have given, which point 1 and 2 is right, or 3 and 4 is right, or 1, 3 is right, something like that. Now, let us analyze this. Synchronous motor operates at 0.8 PF lag. Okay. So, our uh, notation is generator motor. Okay. So, motor, in the sense, some resistance, inductance, or resistance capacitance. So, for example, on the generator, this is the motor, motor is operating at lagging power factor. Means that is it inductive dominated or capacitive dominated? It is operating at lagging, so inductive. Okay. So, motor operating at inductive, okay, means lagging power factor. What does it mean? It is absorbing reactive power. Forget about it. Okay, so it is absorbing reactive power. Now come back to our synchronous machine. Okay, whatever the conclusions uh, we had previously, like you know, synchronous machine absorb reactive power, under excited. Synchronous machine deliver reactive power, over excited. Now, is it absorbing or delivering? Absorbing. So the moment it is absorbing, it should be under excited. Now let us draw the phasor diagram. For example, this is VT. Okay, now for example, with respect to VT, IA is lagging. Now 90 degrees to IA, 90 degrees to IA. So, my what do you say? IA axis should be 90 degrees to IA. Now, EF should be leading or EF should be lagging in motor. Field pole should lag behind resultant. In motor, EF should lag behind VT. So, my EF should be here. So, let us think of this is my EF. And this is going to be IA axis. IA axis. Okay. So don't bother about like you know equations. Is it minus GIA axis or plus GIA axis? Equations will take care. We are going to solve many problems. Okay. Now means what he is varying now? Is he varying power? No, field current. Okay. So if he vary just field current, field current, like you know, in actual power, there will be no variations. Okay. So just by varying field current, like you know. DC source is there with DC source in the field if you inject more current will it deliver active power no it means just you are increasing field current means that it will deliver something or it can deliver something which is nothing okay so what is real power real power is mechanical power okay so for example in an alternator if I supply more prime over input output will be more output actual power will be more Okay, but if you think of reactive power, reactive power can be delivered by anybody, can be absorbed by anybody because reactive power is not a power. Okay, now in this way, like you know, active power is going to be constant and reactive power may vary because of the field current. So, active power in the sense, this is going to be delta, right? This is going to be delta. Vt, Ef, Ef sin delta, Ef sin delta. So, this is going to be constant. Isn't it or not? When active power is constant, EF sin delta, go through my previous lectures, automatically you will come to know, EF sin delta is going to be constant. Why active power is constant? Now, what about IA cos pi should be constant? Because VT, IA cos pi is going to be active power or actual power. So, IA cos pi, this is going to be IA cos pi. IA cos pi should be constant. Okay. Now, for example, if you are increasing field current, if you are increasing field current, if you increase field current, IF, the length of EF should increase. Okay. So, for example, as of now, is it under excited or not? Yes. EF cos delta. This is delta. EF cos delta minus VT. Minus VT is going to be negative. So, it is going to deliver negative reactive power or it is absorbing uh, reactive power. Now, for example, if I increase IF, length of EF should increase. Length of EF should increase. So from black to blue increase with the same 
active power. Now it is under excited. Now it is normal excited because E F cos delta equal to V T. So V T E F cos delta is equal means E F cos delta minus V T is going to be zero. It will deliver neither what do you say reactive power nor absorb. Okay. Now for example, for example, if I increase field current still, if I increase field current still. Okay, so if I increase field current, length of EF increase. If length of EF increase, this is going to be I axis. I axis. Okay, now let us come back to currents. Now from black to red, from black to red, IA cos pi should be same. So IA cos pi should be same. Okay, now after that, for blue, for blue, EF cos delta is more than VT. So 90 degrees to here, 90 degrees, this is IA axis only, no? VT to EF is going to be IA axis, 90 degrees to IA axis, 90 degrees maybe it can come here, okay, so this is 90 degrees and IA cos pi should be same, so it is going to be like this, okay, so from black IA to red, length of current is reduced, from red to blue, length of current is going to increase, what about the power factor, here power factor is lagging, here unity one so it improved and again it is going to leading leading in the sense power factor is going to reduce now keep that point in mind just go through each and every statement the power factor decreases up to certain value no power factor is increasing so this is wrong and after that the armature current increases up to certain value no armature current is reducing Okay, now the power factor increases up to certain value of field current and thereafter it decreases. Yes, power factor is going to increase up to unity and after that reduce. It is right. And the armature current decreases up to certain value of field current and thereafter it increases. Armature current, length of armature current decreasing and after that it will increase. So this 3 and 4 should be right. Done. Okay, now next thing is like you know of course in detailed course I will handle that. Okay, phasor diagram one should be habituated deeply to the phasor diagram that basically ideally we should not draw this. You have to remember, you have to imagine like you know, if you can imagine the phasor diagram like you know just read it, mark it. Okay, but anyway in detailed course like you know I will uh, discuss in detail such that automatically any condition just you will be able to imagine the phasor diagram. Okay, now let us see one more question. That is like you know, a 500 megawatt three phase star connected synchronous generator has a rated voltage of something at 0.8 power factor. The line current when operating at full load rated conditions will be. Is this synchronous machine question? No, it's not synchronous machine question. It is three phase power question. Okay, basically, what is like you know, uh, this particular current? We know that root 3 VL IL cos pi equal to power that's it okay so what he is asking here il he is asking il equal to 500 megawatt megawatt divided by root 3 into line voltage is 21.5 into 10 cube kv into cos pi 0.85 that's it okay so that is going to be 15.79 kilo amperes Okay, now let us see another question, right? So in this question, in this question, what they have given a standalone engine driven generator, isolated generator, okay, is feeding a partly inductive load. A capacitor is now connected across the load to completely nullify the inductive current. For this operating condition, they have given ABC like, you know, which are like uh, wrong. The field current has to be reduced and fuel input left unaltered. Should be the answer. Let us see. For example, this is the generator. Transmission line. Here, load is there. Inductive dominated. Okay. So, in this condition, who is delivering reactive power? Only reactive power, like you know, we have to think why the active power, whatever may be the power absorbed by resistance, should be delivered by alternator only. There is nobody else which can deliver active power. So, forget about active power. My this is delivering Q. What does it mean? It should be overexcited. It should be overexcited. 
okay it is the first condition like you know isolated case now a capacitor is now connected across the load to completely nullify the inductive current so if i connect capacitor here to completely nullify reactive power requirement of this okay then this has to be normal excitation okay so black is going to be over excitation red case it has to come back to normal excitation so field current has to be reduced okay now what about fuel input should be same why because the active power requirement by the resistance is going to be same okay reactive power can be delivered by anybody but active power should be delivered by generator only active power can be consumed by resistance only that resistance representation can be synchronous motor resistance representation can be induction motor resistance representation can be maybe fluorescent lamps and all lighting loads okay so answer should be this the field current has to be reduced from over excitation to normal excitation and fuel input left unaltered because active power is going to be same so this problem is solved now let us see they have given one question in like you know we should be able actually it's a matching question okay so we should be able to tell pqrs they have given the graphs and on y-axis per unit of terminal voltage or per unit of ef in between these two one thing has to be taken and this is going to be a a okay now see here first a constant excitation non-zero leading okay so constant excitation non-zero leading for example if i think of this sending and voltage this receiving and voltage power is going in this direction okay so excitation ef is constant ef is constant very simple like you know let us think of this is ef at an angle delta in a way in voltage regulation calculations delta need not be bothered because magnitude only matters so this is going to be vt and this is going to be ia okay what he is saying in the first ef is constant okay so sending and voltage is constant receiving and voltage magnitude will be decided by voltage regulation simple receiving and voltage magnitude will be decided by power factor if it is uh, what is a leading power factor compared to sending and receiving it should be more okay so what is saying constant excitation ef is going to be constant and a non-zero leading leading in the sense it should increase so this is going to be a right and after that constant excitation zero power factor for example constant ef is constant vt is going to vary and this is zpf lead in ZPF lead condition, characteristic is going to be straight line. Okay. I did not discuss about straight line previously in our rational characteristics. Now let us see. For example, if I think of ZPF lead, okay, let me think of as usual VT like this, terminal voltage like this, and ZPF leading IA like this. Okay. Under that condition, what is EF? VT plus ix is going to be f so ia is here vt is here ia ix okay vt plus ix is f so vt plus ix this is going to be ix ia x is going to where is f f is here okay so directly vt and ef are in line or not yes so directly i forget about all this directly we can add f plus i x s forget about j and all okay so we f plus i x s is vt okay so like you know algebraically algebraically we need not bother about j term at all so it will become straight line now constant excitation zpf lead so zpf lead ef is constant vt has to increase linearly so p is going to be b now constant terminal voltage and zero power factor lead for example vt is constant now and zpf lead zpf lead forget about zpf first leading leading no so leading in the sense receiving and voltage should be more sending and voltage should be less so ef should be less vt should be more for a given vt ef should be less okay for a given vt constant ef should be less and zpf lead ZPF lead means that it will become a straight line. So, yes, is going to be C. 
okay now next thing is constant vt non zero leading non zero leading constant vt non zero in the forget about non zero leading okay so vt is constant leading in the sense ef should be the uh, sending at voltage should be less okay and that particular less will become non linear because it is not zpf so r is going to be d okay constant vt non zero leading leading condition so ef should be voltage regulation should be negative for given vt ef should be less ef is becoming less okay so for ab for ab constant excitation in the sense for ab in y axis per unit terminal voltage should be taken and constant vt means that y axis is going to be per unit of ef okay actually in uh, some of the publications they have written per unit value of vt of per unit value of ef it's a small typo error okay it is not of here it is r okay now in upcoming sessions we will solve some other problems also